Hey everyone, Victor here. So I switched over to Sublime Text. Um, not using Eclipse anymore. Just uh, I feel it, it better suits my needs for the current projects that I'm working on. So I still have the model view and controller modules here in the Sublime Text, and then I'm running it with the the terminal. So I navigated to the directory where where I have these files and then I just run it using the command python3 and then controller.py python3 because uh, on Mac uh, there's actually Python pre-installed so Python is reserved for the, the version of Python that comes installed with it. I think there's a few applications that use it like I know that Photos does and some other ones so when you if you install another version of Python, for example Python 3, then you have to use a different environment variable. So using that and then running our calculator, you'll see this is this is what we have so far. Now before I continue with the logic, I wanted to show you really quickly how to center the screen or center the, the window. If you see when we run it. Right now it's being created up on this top left corner. And this might change depending on the system that you're on. And then I think on Windows actually it'll even change each time you run it. Um, it won't get created in the same position. So there's ways that you can first of all make it so that it gets created in the same place each time. And then in this case if we wanted it to get created in the center each time then we can do that as well so going back to our view we'll create another method call it center window now something to note here is that we're going to have to call this method after the make entry and make buttons uh, with methods and the reason for that is because the to center the window we're going to need the dimensions of the window and in addition to the dimensions of the screen but the dimensions of the window will depend on the widgets that we create so currently we just have the the entry and then these buttons but if we were to pack in more buttons or pack in other widgets then those dimensions would, would change. Um, those, those dimensions are dynamic. If we had a fixed width and height of the window, like if we were just going to make a window that was 100 by 100, then we could potentially call it before calling the other methods. But in this case we need to call it after making the widgets. So we're going to make the widgets and then we're going to need the way we change the dimensions of the window and also the center it, we're going to use the geometry method. And again this method is from the tk.tk object. So this method essentially takes in uh, four components. It's uh, width times height plus x offset plus y offset if you were only going to change the dimensions of the window then you can just uh, give it the width times height and emit the offsets but in this case we're going to center it so we're going to need all four components so we're going to need width times height and these are variables that I'll be creating in a second so width times height plus x offset plus y offset. So once we have all of these four variables, we can create we can pass it in as one concatenated string to the geometry method. And I'm doing this with the f string, which is again is the formatted string and only available um, 
starting with, I believe, Python 3.6. So, to get the width of the window, we call the winfo width method. This will give us the width of our window, of our calculator. And then similar this will give us a height. <clears throat> so now that we have the width and the height of our window, we can calculate an X offset and a Y offset using the width and the height of the screen. So whichever screen the window's in, we need to calculate the center of that screen. So the X offset will be the width of the screen minus the width of our window divided by 2. So the way we get the width of the screen is with winfo underscore screen width. Just uh, no underscore. So screen width minus width of our window divided by 2. And then if you notice here, I use two forward slashes, which again means, means um, integer division, one forward slashes, floating point, and then, or if you use just one, it'll give you a floating point, but if you use two, then it'll give you an integer always, even if the result is something like 4.5, then it'll just give you the four. And then to get the, if you wanted to get like the result, then you can use a percent sign. But in this case, we want an integer because the the geometry method requires that it be an integer. If you do the single forward slash and it returns a floating point, um, where it would return a floating point, even if it was if the result was the whole number, it would re still return something like 0 0.0. And then if you pass that to the geometry, then uh, you'll get an an error. So we need to do return an integer. That's going to be our x offset, and then same thing to get the height. Similarly, you do screen height minus height, divided by 2. So now we have width and height of the window, and then using those to and then also the dimensions of the screen we can calculate the the x offset and the y offset which will allow us to center the the window or the calculator so again we have to call that after the the widgets have been created because that will determine the dimensions of the window so Oh, and I forgot one thing. So, when the when this tk dot tk object gets gets initialized, um, those attributes of the window, the width and the height, are just set to one. So then, when you add in widgets, obviously the dimensions change, but it doesn't change them automatically. So you have to call uh, another method. There's self.update and self.update idle tasks. And both basically update that object. Um, things like uh, if you created widgets or if you change some other states, then that'll update them. So now when we call the window width, it'll create it'll return the actual width of the window. Otherwise if we don't do that, it's just these both return just one. So now that we call the update, it'll return the width after the, the widgets have been created. So So as you see now, the, the window is centered, 
and if you caught it briefly it does get created up here in this top corner but then it gets moved to the center and that was with our method here so again it gets created up here but then it gets moved to the center and that might be useful in some cases if you're programming GUI applications and you want the window to always show up in the center or always show up in any place then you can use the geometry method and again you can also use it to change the dimensions of the window in this case our dimensions are dynamic because it would depend on the widgets that we that we enter into the window so right now the dimensions are dependent on this entry and then these uh, these buttons that we have here so if we were to <clears throat> for example make the buttons bigger which we can do here so now each of those buttons are gonna have a width of 20 which I think the default is 10 um, oh I put it in the wrong place that right now it's inside the lambda so so see now the, the buttons are super wide but the window's still centered because it's it goes off of the width and the height, which is it gets it after those those widgets have been created. So the the width that it's returning now and the height, well actually the height is the same, but now the width that it's returning is different because the buttons are wider. So if you had a if your window dimensions were static, like let's say you just had a window that was 100 by 100, then you wouldn't need to get the, the width and the height, and you wouldn't need to call the, the update. But in this case, our, our dimensions of our window are dynamic based on, um, first of all, which, which widgets we pack in and their dimensions. 